everyone, welcome back, and thank you so much for joining us again here at the AWS New York City Summit. My name is Adrian San Miguel. I am a principal partner enterprise architect here at AWS, and still throwing it down with a good friend of mine, Jasmine. Jasmine, always lovely to see you. Always, Adrian. I'm Jasmine Kyles. I'm a manager of product management here at AWS, and Adrian and I are joined by some of our friends today. We call everyone on the show a friend, so we hope you're ready to embrace it. We are. All right, so who do we have here? So hi, I'm Will McQueen. Uh, I work at Bear. I'm a head of our data and analytics um, platforms. And I'm Peter Veronazzi. I'm the data analytics platform lead on the Wheels organization. Awesome. So we heard something really exciting happened earlier today. Will, do you want to? Yeah, I had the amazing opportunity to stand up on stage with Matt and to give a little bit of a talk about how the technologies that are being invented and created at AWS are having an impact on our business um, and really what the real world opportunities are for us to use technology to ch achieve the objectives of, of Bayer in our crop science division. So yeah. it was you know, a, a little bit of a new experience in front of a lot of people, <laughs> but it was it was definitely fun and I enjoyed it and it was a really good opportunity to talk about our company and the impact that we have. Yeah, we heard you filled the room. It would, looked pretty full, yeah, from, <laughs> yeah. Uh, from up on stage, for sure. <laughs> it really was a great story. So you said you mentioned that you worked for Bayer's Crop Science Division. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, we're you know one of the leading um, enterprise agriculture companies in the world. Um, we do a lot to produce food that powers a lot of, of different consumption, you know, all throughout the world. So um, we, of course, sit in you know the technology area of the company, but we have the ability to leverage technology to really help accelerate and to improve our company's ability to produce food um, and fuel for you know a growing population. So. It's really rewarding to work in tech, but to do it in a way that really, as you apply that technology, having a really positive impact on the world, which is, re is really cool. Yeah, and I think something that we kind of lose in the nuance being technologists is, hey, we're going to go do this cool technology, and it's going to be awesome. Here's the architecture and the graphic charts. But being able to tie it back to a real-life outcome that impacts the populace more than just a small constituency, that's huge. That's something that, you know, when I grow up, I would aspire that something that I touched, something that big, that important, was that impactful to folks. You know, I gotta say, I'm a little green with envy over here because <laughs> you get to you get to live the the dream where you're building things that are material and contribute to better quality of life. Yep. So your keynote started talking a little bit about food scarcity. Tell us what Bayer is doing to address food scarcity and sustainability. Yeah, I mean, especially in terms of like the role that we play, that Pedro and I and our teams play, um, we are leveraging technology to really improve our ability to produce products, um, to be able to, to create more of the products that we sell, but to do it in a way that is as positively impactful of the environment as possible. So okay. we're trying to increase how much products we can produce, but do it in a way that you know uses as few resources as possible. So that's that's the role we play, and, and the technology actually plays a really huge part in that um, in that part of our company's mission. Yeah, tell us a little bit about how long you've been using the technology. Yeah, we've been. I mean, we've been really heavy in AWS for over ten years now. Wow. Um, you know, it took us a little bit to get started to really embrace the cloud, but when we did, it really exploded, and we've been really you know cloud only for you know four or five years now we've you know of course got a, a legacy footprint that we're still trying to move but we've been you know all in on on the cloud and AWS specifically for for over 10 years at this point you know it's kind of interesting um, I actually grew up on a farm and ranch and right next to sorghum uh, orange corn just about every type of uh, agriculture you can think of a chat uh, if you have this similar experience or or know somebody you know that it is very difficult to plan things out right way, and yeah, maybe a, a hurricane, just like we had in Texas come through, that can throw off the calculus. It is incredibly important to be able to leverage technology exactly the way that you mentioned, to be able to solve these real world problems. And it raises a question for me. Um, everybody's talking about generative AI at, at this point. How have you gotten started in leveraging generative AI to solve these sorts of just oddball problems that may be popping up? Sure. Uh, we have a couple of different use cases, right? It goes from your starting, let's leverage documentation, create comprehensive chatbots mm -hmm. to enable our users and growers to, to have access to more information, right? That's how it started. 
But we're taking that even further. We have projects that we're exploring Gen AI, um, how to generate content over image, right? Okay. Image is a big part of, of, our, of our cycle of product okay. development. And we're leverage, trying to leverage Gen AI to generate in high definition images. That's amazing, because I can remember getting woken up by crop dusters and somebody's out there like physically inspecting the dirt to figure out what the ratio is supposed to be. And being able to not have to do that, I would imagine if I was in that biz, if I'm the rancher that's paying for that service, that's huge. That's, right. that's, it goes beyond transformational, it almost like transcendental at that point. Yep. I, I think one thing that's also a little bit unique of, of the work that we do is it's, it's really that intersection of digital capabilities along with like the physical and mechanical, yeah. right? So a lot of kind of the points that you just made, we need to bring these technologies together to really have the full impact of, of what we're capable of doing. And you know, we, we make a lot of investment on both sides of that, on both the engineering and the digital solutions and, and doing that together in a way that amplifies the impact of, of both. So it almost sounds like the idea of uh, democratization of innovation is kind of where you're trying to play. Is that right? Yeah. It, that's a big part of it. I mean, in, innovation is, is all throughout our, our company's culture. And you know, we, we see great ideas and, and new thoughts coming from all areas. We've got a, a very large um, population of data scientists like embedded within our business itself. Okay. And the role that we play is really providing them with the platforms and capabilities to make their impact as large as possible. Um, so yeah, though, I mean, for sure, everywhere throughout the company, you find people that are trying new and innovative things, looking for the next invention that's going to move us forward. Yeah, you've created this culture of innovation, and one of the things that you did was use Amazon SageMaker to develop this decision science ecosystem. Tell us more about that. I can absolutely tell you. That's, <laughs> I, I've been living and in, 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 you know, breathing that for a couple of years now. So yeah, so we're, we're creating, you know, to Will's point, or decision science platform. We want to be able to multiply all the effort of the data scientists to be able to you know, deliver more value to our growers and be able to create products faster, get faster to the market, right? That's really our goal. Yeah. Uh, and when we look internally, what we're trying, what we're achieving with that is standardization of our ways of working. Uh, a data scientist within Bayer will be a data scientist regardless of the team, the team they're working mm -hmm. at, right? So there's a lot of th good things that come out of it. Um, and SageMaker Suite is definitely um, the centerpiece of that. Interesting. Okay, so I guess I have to ask the million dollar question. Uh, how and where are you using Bedrock? I, I'm very, I have some ideas, but I would assume that you have better ideas of where you're implementing it, maybe even Q2. Yeah, so I, I, I personally have been doing that uh, within the DSE, okay. and there's a couple different ways, right? So one of our goals is to make the DSE, the decision science ecosystem, as the first uh, okay. data science that is totally Gen AI driven, right? Which means for us internally at Bayer, I want our users or, or data scientists to be able to ask questions on how to build things within the DSC or, okay. or ask questions, hey, I need this, this new provision. Um, and, and Bedrock would be able, through agents, interact with our own APIs and provision um, those assets and, and having them started working. So that's one of the ways, and apart from the common ways that we just talked about, like mm -hmm. leverage documentation and, and creating that better experience for, for end users. Yeah. So when you think about these solutions that you're creating for the workforce, what difference has it made compared to where you were, you know, 10 years ago of getting um, up in the cloud, you're having to take everyone on this transformation journey, and then four or five years ago, you know, you said, hey, I'm going all in. What difference has it made? Yeah, I can start. I mean, I think, you know, when we started on our journey to build our next generation data science platform, we had two high-level objectives in mind. Okay. One was lowering the barrier of entry, making it a lot easier for scientists to build models and to get those models to production to just start creating value for our businesses as, as easily as possible. If you look back five years ago, there was a lot of engineering work that had to happen there. You would see a lot of examples where maybe somebody proved out a concept you know, in a discovery phase of, of a model's life cycle. They validated that concept and the opportunity to create value for the company, but then they had to re-engineer the solution to get it to production and, and to make it scale. So one of our objectives is to really reduce that friction and make it a lot faster to go from idea to value. Um, yeah. And that's really kind of one of the key accelerators that we're trying to deliver um, as part of the solutions that we're building. The other side of that, and kind of our secondary objective, was to create technical capabilities that make it easier to solve 
much harder and more complicated problems. Okay. So we're kind of attacking the problem from both ends. We right. want to let our, 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 our people um, create much more sophisticated solutions and solve, solve, solve harder problems, mm -hmm. but we also want to make it much easier to get something you know, to, to the place where it's creating value a lot quicker. So. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that, that kind of like two-prong approach of where, you know, like, hey, I understand and recognize that you're this expert scientist, but let me not let the technology weigh you down yeah. and getting to driving that innovation and really getting into that crop science. You know, I don't know a lot about crop science. I can grow a garden and that's about <laughs> it. But <laughs> I imagine, you know, there's, there's a lot that you're doing in the world and, you know, you want to move rather quickly where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so with having this technology, you're able to do that. Yeah, for sure. And actually, I think that's a really important point because especially where we are in kind of the journey with generative AI is everybody's really excited and they want to go really, really fast. Mm -hmm. But we also need to be careful yes. about the solutions that we build and we need to do it in a very thoughtful and deliberate way. Um, so it's it's really trying to strike that balance and, and walk that tightrope of like you want people out there just swinging for the fences, trying like new and novel things that are you know out there that maybe people haven't thought of, but you, you really do have to be careful and you, yeah. you need to be really thoughtful about how you take those solutions to market and the level of testing and validation that needs to be done to verify that the output that you're getting from Gen AI is something accurate that yeah. we can believe and that our customers can trust. Yeah. yeah, we all have that level of responsibility yeah. that we have to make sure that we put forth out there because what we're putting forth out there is going to affect generations to come. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And if I can add, yeah, uh, I, I think I'll, I'll make a hook to Will's presentation earlier today because I think there are two things that he mentioned there that are very important Why we're building this platform. One of them is less code, right? We want to make sure that our data scientists, they can get much faster to where they need to go without having to reinvent the wheel, right? Yeah. And the second thing that I want to talk about is the no value on without the VA, uh, no value for technologies that they were already invented, yeah. right? There's no reason to reinvent the wheel, try to build infrastructure again. Uh, so it, our platform, we enabled them to move a lot faster by having all that figured out for them, right? Yeah. I yeah. like it. it. It takes kind of some of those, the, the menial things off of their plate so yep. they can really focus on being those experts. Exactly. They can, they can focus yeah. on science, right? Yeah. That's what they're good for. Yeah. Right? We, we talk a lot about undifferentiated heavy lifting. We talk a ton about be the best expert that you can on the thing that you're doing. And this is you know part and parcel to that. I, if I were working with a bunch of data scientists, I want them doing data science-y things, not, hey, go run this Terraform. Hey, go build this app. Hey, uh, you need to go put in a uh, storage array that's capable of a million IOPS for this uh, HPC workload. It, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think that actually is, is a really good um, reason that embedding Gen AI capabilities in the platform that we're building is, is really important. Yeah. Because people don't always go out and search and read a bunch of documentation to know yeah. how to solve something that's right in front of them. But if they have a platform that's watching what they're doing in real time and making suggestions based on the work that they've done, how they could get to where they're going, mm -hmm. that really raises the level of adoption of the capability and it really puts us in a position that we can encourage as much reuse as possible. So that's yeah. that's one of the think I one of the biggest opportunities that we have with the technology. Yeah. I like that reuse and then also Pedro what you said about not having to like reinvent something every single time. So yep. we know that you're using Amazon Q developer. Tell us a little bit about how you're doing reuse with Absolutely, yeah, so it, that's how we leverage a lot of the Amazon Q, specifically Amazon Q, uh, within the DSC environment we use in both ways. So one of the days looking at how we're building our platform, right? New developers coming in on my team, on our team, they come in and they, they get a lot faster, be able to hit the ground running and delivering like valuable code. So that Q helped us a lot with that. Yeah, and is that the code repositories that they would have access Correct. to? Or, okay. yeah. And, and the other, so basically, Q has access to read all that, understand what's doing, and, and the developer has an opportunity to ask questions and interact with it. Okay. Uh, and the second part of that is like how we can enable uh, users of our platform, like the builders, right? Because th those are our stakeholders, to come in and have a much easier uh, onboarding time um, to achieve their goals, right? So that's how we we leverage it. And I was particularly very excited. I was talking to Will earlier today about the custom Amazon Q. Mm -hmm. I think that will be definitely a game changer for us as we grow the DSE as a platform because then we can make it very curated to the experience that we want our, our stakeholders to have within DSE on AWS. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be definitely a game changer. Yeah, I like that. 
that's uh, that's what we like to hear, you know? And so you're, you're doing that, when you think about that, that's kind of, you know, they see things on the back end, but what is it also doing for the UX or the user experience? Yeah, so uh, and, and that's where it comes in. Uh, we, we're able to leverage Amazon Q specifically to create a different experience for our users, right? So it's not only like they're going to go and find documentation, so they have a chatbot available to them that can ask all the different questions and compre get comprehensive yeah. answers. It's bringing that QA, so like you said, onboarding. So if I'm starting at Bayer Crop Science, it's my first day, I'm going in <laughs> there and I'm saying, hey, I, I'm, I want to ask a question. You know, right. I, I don't want to turn around and ask someone who's back over here working on this really hard problem, right. or maybe they just got pulled into something else. I can sit here and interact with Amazon Q, ask a question, get what I need based on all of this wealth of knowledge that yep. already exists. Yeah. Correct. Thanks. Wow, that's a that's a lot to chew on. So I, I guess I got to ask the million dollar question: What are you most looking forward to innovating uh, next? You know, what's that next think big idea that you might be uh, munging on right now? Um, that's a good question, um, and it's it's maybe a little bit hard to answer because okay. I think I think for this reason, I think a lot of the things that are maybe the biggest potential opportunities for us are things that are connected to our R&D pipeline. Okay. And of course, things that are that early in our product development process are you know, pretty proprietary and things that we know or believe are gonna contribute to a future competitive advantage for us as a company. So just, just take my word for it that there's a whole host of things that we're excited about that we can't talk about in detail. Um, Fine, but but I would say I mean the things that that we that we can talk about that you know Pedro has been hitting on are probably some of the things that I'm most excited about because it is all about creating a platform that makes it easy for people to be successful. Yeah, and I, I just think there's so much opportunity. Um, you know, to your point, like sometimes people even don't even know the right question to ask. Yeah, and and that's where I think there's just a, a such a huge opportunity for. AI to help people through that journey, and every additional bit of efficiency that we can, you know, deliver to our internal workforce is is just you know contributing to our ability to accelerate. So I think for me that's a, that's that's kind of our mission as we as we create and you know maintain technical platforms. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about the Gen AI space and figure out how we're going to scale and really harvest. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing. Uh, <laughs> How we can harvest the, the value of that as we scale throughout the organization. We're talking about you know hundreds hundreds of data scientists. How we enable them to securely get those ideas to reality and really start getting the value from that. So way yeah. to combine threads there. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, just even be having the ability to say, hey, we're matriculating so far back into our pipeline because we are leveraging this technology that's not, that is not forcing us to deal with the low-hanging fruit. Even that, I think, in itself is a win. You're able to have those think big long-term projections by leveraging this software, or yeah. leveraging the technology. Yeah, and I would just, I mean, add, like, even a more general point of, like, I mean, we are at such a unique point in time of technology evolution, mm -hmm. and not everyone gets to, you know, be part of that and be in yeah. the middle of it. And I, I just, I think that's super exciting that, Hey, it might be another you know 15 or 20 years before a, a new comparable you know level of impact technology. And a lot of people say like, hey, they can equate you know Gen AI and the opportunity in the place that we are at now with the advent of the internet. And you know that like that's the level of of impact and I think just importance of the time that we're living in. And I think yeah. that's that's just so exciting. Yeah. Def definitely is humbling to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate the time. It has been phenomenal to learn and to see you on the keynote stage and then to grace us with your presence here on AWS <laughs> On Air. We are so delighted. We enjoyed hearing about your decision science ecosystem, all of the technologies that you're using within AWS and our generative AI services to make it happen. And we wish you well in your continued innovation. Well, thanks so much. It was a, a joy to talk to you guys and really appreciated the opportunity. Of course. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, we'll be back with more.